What would it mean to end the Fed? Is ending the Fed a good idea or a dangerous idea? To answer that, you first have to understand what the Fed does. The Fed is short for the Federal Reserve System, the central bank of the United States. A central bank is a government agency at the center of the monetary and banking system. The Fed plays five main roles. First, it runs the system for transferring funds between banks. For example, when you write a check to someone who then deposits it in a different bank. Second, the Fed issues paper currency, the familiar Federal Reserve notes in your wallet. Third, it regulates commercial banks, the sort of banks you and I bank with. For example, the Fed enforces capital requirements, reserve requirements, and many, many paperwork requirements. Fourth, the Fed is called upon to provide more cash when the banking system as a whole is running low, a role known as lender of last resort. And fifth, it conducts monetary policy. That's the focus of most news stories reporting on the Fed these days. Monetary policy includes decisions about the interest rate at which banks borrow from one another. Lowering or raising that rate implies a decision to expand the amount of money in the economy faster or slower. Given all these important things it does, is it even possible to end the Fed? Can a modern financial system work well without a central bank? Yes. There are literally dozens of historical examples, including Scotland, Sweden, Switzerland, and Canada. Canada's parliament didn't create a central bank until 1934. Some advanced economies, like Hong Kong, don't have a central bank today. Using historical examples like these, we can see what happens when there is no central bank to carry out the five functions I just mentioned. First, absent a central bank, the interbank payment system is run by institutions called clearinghouse associations, organized by cooperating bankers for that purpose. Historically, these worked very well. The Federal Reserve Act nationalized much of the clearinghouse system in the U.S., but even today a private institution called the Clearinghouse Payments Company, owned by its participating banks, handles about half of the huge daily volume of wired payments in the United States. Second, paper currency can be issued by ordinary banks, as it was in the U.S. until the 1930s. Today we're familiar with private financial companies like American Express, Visa, and Citicorp issuing redeemable traveler's checks. Without a central bank, we would soon become familiar again with ordinary banks issuing redeemable currency notes. Private bank notes are still the dominant currency in some parts of the world, namely Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Hong Kong. What about regulating commercial banks? Before the Federal Reserve, the private clearinghouse associations had standards for membership. A bank had to qualify to be allowed in. The clearinghouses in this way regulated their members to be sure they were solid and would, at the end of the day, be fully able to settle up with the other member banks. A member bank had to furnish its balance sheet to the clearinghouse, and it had to allow clearinghouse examiners to audit its books. Clearinghouse associations in the U.S. also played the lender of last resort role. Doing so was in its members' interest as a kind of mutual insurance. Finally, who would conduct monetary policy without a central bank? Well, nobody would. And monetary policy is actually a role that nobody needs to play. Under a gold or silver standard, with private mints producing coins and private banks issuing the paper currency, as well as the checking account money, decentralized market forces keep the quantity of money well regulated. No central committee needs to guess whether the economy could use more monetary expansion or less monetary expansion. You could say the currency regulates itself. After our recent financial panic, which I would blame mostly on the Fed, I think a self-regulating monetary system is an idea worth considering. So to sum up, the Federal Reserve does some useful things. It issues currency, clears checks, and evaluates banks for soundness, but those things can be done better by private institutions. And the Fed also does some harmful things, like subsidizing weak banks and bailing out failed Wall Street investment houses. It enforces harmful restrictions on banks, and it conducts a disruptive monetary policy. So while some worry that ending the Fed would be imprudent, I worry that it would be imprudent and even dangerous to leave control of money with the same institution that got us into the last crisis, merely crossing our fingers and hoping that it will do better in the future. You can do more than watch videos. Click on one of these links to learn about our other student opportunities.